So, um, okay, okay, okay. So go ahead and let me know what kinds of questions you have. Okay. Um, so it's really just 7.4. Um, I understand up to D and then once I get to E and I have to do the, um, do more of like the algebra part of it, uh -huh. that's where I get confused. Okay. So, um, uh, uh, now I think I, I worked on some of these later ones, um, in the previous videos and I have the, the whiteboards for those, which I can build off of, uh, is there, now, is there, is there, a, is there a particular one that you'd like to start with here? Can we start with E? So e? I, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's, uh, all these colors here. Um, so I have the first parts, um, and I have a, I just don't know how to get B. Cause it's like, it still has X in it. That's why I conf I'm confused. Okay. Uh, and yeah, I, I, uh, let's see. I don't think that's a repeat. I think that's a new one, uh, which the students will appreciate. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's start a new one then. All right. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. So we're looking at, uh, let's see. E, right, okay. So looking at uh, 7.42 E, all right. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we have the blah, blah, blah over the uh, X plus two and the X square plus one, mm -hmm. all right. Okay, uh, and then first of all, it's important to get the form right. We have a distinct linear, so the partial fraction form is a over x plus, okay, uh, we have x squared plus one below here. And do you remember what we put up here on the top? Is it bx plus c? That's correct. <laughs> That's correct, yeah. And a lot of students uh, wouldn't have known that. It's because we have, the, we have that prime quadratic down below, the x squared plus one, that has no real zeros. If you have a quadratic with no real zeros, then it's a prime quadratic over the reals we have to put a linear form up there. So a number times X plus a number, that form, like BX plus C. Very good, very good. So the form is part of the battle and you have to get the right form in order to start the game. All right, uh, any questions about the form? No. Okay, all right. So then the next step is to get the basic equation. You must write down the basic equation, all right? Uh, I'll stop being lazy. I'll go ahead and write down the full numerator because when you multiply um, uh, uh, a fraction by its bottom, you get the top. Uh, the mm -hmm. top, the squiggle is the top here, the 8x squared. Yes. Okay. Uh, and we need to be careful not to miswrite. In fact, uh, when students have asked me questions of late, it seems like miswriting, mistranscribing has been a key issue, especially with I science. I know that's, that's my questions for you. <laughs> right, right. And, all, and matrices also. Yeah. So these little things like signs and mistranscriptions, they're going to bite you a lot in seven and eight, especially. Um, all right. So 8x squared plus 7x plus 12, at least they're all pluses here, right? They're all positive, equals. Okay, um, now you can either write out the cancellations or do them mentally. Uh, if, if you multiply this fraction by the LCD, uh, whoa, whoa, I forgot, this is x plus two, sorry, that's x plus two. There's a previous problem, it was just an x, this is x plus two, sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, all right, so, so this fraction here, all right. Uh, the A, of course, survives on the top. The X plus two here knocks out the X plus two there. But when we multiply by the X squared plus one, that hangs out, that hangs around. Yes. Okay, plus, all right. Uh, now I'm going to make a mistake on purpose. Let's see if you can catch this. Uh, this gets people all the time. Okay, we have the top here, the BX plus C. The guy who's missing down here is the X plus two. My question to you is, do you see the error I've made? A lot of students write this, but do you see the error I've made? I don't actually. Parentheses. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, and in yesterday's video, I think uh, um, yeah, uh, I also he... got the student last time, right? It's like, uh, it was like a, a it, was, it was like this with an X out here. Mm -hmm. And it was a very similar issue uh, because remember the fraction bar implicitly groups the top and the bottom. Now, because it does that, we don't have to write these parentheses down, but sometimes it helps to voluntarily do that. And before, when we've simplified compound fractions before, uh, I would sometimes put the top in parentheses and the bottom in parentheses, even though I didn't have to, because it was good to remind ourselves that that grouping still exists. Uh, but mm -hmm. I must tell you that uh, on this kind of problem, 
like on a final exam in previous semesters, uh, perhaps the most common error that I've seen is people not putting in those grouping symbols. All right, so that's my warning on that. Okay, uh, any questions thus far? No. Okay, so we have the basic equation, which remember is required, right? Okay, so next up, let's consider various strategies. Here, we might consider a mix because we have a mix of linear and the prime quadratics. For example, uh, method one, plugging in convenient values for x. Do you see a convenient value for x that'll make one of these terms totally drop out? Take a look. Oh, um, sorry, negative two. Correct, right. Uh, Basically, when we have this kind of linear factor here, right, um, right at the bottom over here, then then uh, if you look at the corresponding zero, that can be very helpful. Mm. X equals negative two. And again, uh, observant students might say, well, wait, that's not in the domain. Actually, they're the guys we want <laughs> because this basic equation will hold for all real values of X, regardless of domain issues. If anything, we want the exclusions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we plug in X equals negative two. And on the left, it's a bit tedious, but... Uh, a times, you should show this work actually, a times the square of negative two mm -hmm. plus seven times negative two, but with parentheses, right? Plus 12 equals, and I just have to write the a, I'll put a bracket here. We're placing x with negative two. Again, we need the grouping symbols. We're squaring the negative two. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll put a little red mark, red arrows here, because that's going to be a, a source of error for people. You need these grouping symbols again. We're squaring negative two, all right? Uh, and then uh, the plus one and my bracket. And then we remember that this will become zero, right? So you don't have to indicate that really. I, I trust you that you, I trust that you understand that that just becomes a zero when you plug in negative two for X in here, right? So we don't have to, we don't have to write anything from here. Uh, uh, here we plugged in negative two successfully on the left and on the right. Um, and uh, does that look good to you? Uh, that's not rhetorical. I may have made a mistake. Uh, let's see, a times square root of negative two plus seven times negative two plus 12 equals a times the quantity square root of negative two plus one. I think that looks right. Does that look right to you? Yes, it does. Okay. All right. Uh, so here, uh, just be careful. Um, so what, four times eight is 32. I, I might just kind of do this as side work. So 32. Minus. That's a minus 14 over there, plus 12, just a side work. All right. So let's see. There's a 30, I think. It's a, I think it's a 30 on the left. Yes. Okay. Equals the square of negative 2 is 4. 4 plus mm -hmm. 1 is 5. So we're going to have 5a over there. All right. Divide both sides by 5. A is. We're lucky. It's an integer here. A is. Sorry, six. Six, right. And I think on this on, on this uh, section, I think all of my parameters turn out to be integer, but bear in mind that does not be the case. They could be like one half or one third. Uh, but, but I think I was pretty generous with leaving it as integers uh, throughout mm -hmm. this set. Okay, so A equals six, all right. Any questions thus far? No. Okay. Here where I start getting. <laughs> right, you have choices actually. Uh, and some people would plug in two more values of x. I would switch over to the matching coefficients method, which is more like the algebra stuff. Uh, so I'll, I'll, and, I, and I'd like to show it to you just to show you the, var the variety. Um, but different people can do it different ways. Okay. Uh, my algebra is stronger than my arithmetic. So I, I do tend to shift over to the algebra when I uh, feasibly can. Now, if there, there, if there are good values for x, I, tr I try to plug them in. But I'll tend to go to the algebra when I can, usually. All right, so let's let's go ahead. Uh, I'll go ahead and switch to blue now. All right, so what we're going to do is, first of all, uh, I'd like to rewrite the basic equation uh, because it's good to put that in the bank, right? You don't want to forget that we know that a is 6. That's really easy to forget. So although it, it takes some time, it's worth your time to rewrite the basic equation. So this is the... Uh, Maybe I'll type this out. Uh, let's see. All right. So uh, here's the revised basic equation. All right. Okay. So uh, I'm basically rewriting this whole thing, except we're going to plug in a equals six. So we have eight x squared 
plus 7x, plus 12. A is 6 now. All right. And then x squared plus 1. And then we need this ugly guy again. So we have, uh, um, if I can, well, no, no reason to squeeze this in. Let's uh, do this. Uh, plus the quantity. Remember, we need grouping symbols, bx plus c, times the quantity x plus 2. So we're just replacing a with 6, but it's very good to keep that in mind. All right. At this stage, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to our next method, which is the uh, matching coefficients method. That's the algebra method. OK, so let's uh, go to the matching coefficients method, method two, basically. Right. Uh, whereas here, this is the plug-in method. I'll, I'll briefly mention that here. Uh, this is the plug-in method. And generally speaking, if there are nice values to plug in, I would recommend um, you know, plugging in all the convenient values for x that you can, try to get what you can. And then you might, you have a choice between either plugging in more values or just switching over to the algebra over here. OK, so I'm going to copy the left side. That's a little tedious, but 8x squared plus 7x plus 12, making sure not to miswrite anything equals. OK, so we're going to distribute, basically, on the right side. What do we get when we distribute the 6 through here? We get 6x squared. Plus 6. Plus 6. Good. All right. And then we're going to FOIL over here. That's the way we distribute here. We FOIL. Bx squared. Good. Bx times x is bx squared. And then um, would it be 2bx? Or... Sure. OK. 2bx. Um, we normally write letters after uh, known numbers. Yeah. Okay. 2bx. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then xc? <laughs> that's okay. I would normally write a cx because c is kind of the coefficient, right? Okay. Um, I, I, would not, I would not mark xc as wrong, but cx is conventional. And finally? Um, 2c. 2c, right. Okay, which is generally preferred to c2. Okay, um, any questions so far? I think we're good so far. Yep. Boiling. All right. Okay, so uh, I think we're ready for really the matching coefficients phase. And I'm going to go ahead and put the coefficients in, let's see, how about a nice turquoise here? All right, so on the left we have, I'll do, I'll do this, we have the eight, we have the seven, and we have the 12. Okay, and then I'll put the other pieces in blue here. Okay, it's eight times x squared, mm -hmm. plus seven times x, plus 12. Now it's not so much that this is necessary, but I, I find it personally very helpful when I clearly indicate the coefficients in parentheses, okay, with plus signs in between. So for example, if this were a minus 12, I'd rewrite this as plus negative 12, if that were a minus 12. I like seeing the separation with plus signs so that we can rely on the stuff in parentheses when we match okay. up. Okay, now on the right side, we're going to have a coefficient for x squared, I'll put a plus sign here, a coefficient for x, and then a constant term that's grouped. All right, I'll go ahead and switch to uh, turquoise again. All right, now over here, what are the x squared terms on the right side here? Mm, we have the 6x squared, which I'll check off, and what else? Bx squared. The bx squared, which I'll check off. I think it's good to like check off or indicate what we've gathered along the way. So when we combine like terms, it's like a local factoring, right? It's like we're grouping and doing a local factoring. The coefficient here is going to be six plus what? Six plus. Sorry, B. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so that's going to be the coefficient. Just like, you know, six uh, x squared plus two x squared is eight x squared. If you believe that, you believe that 6x squared plus bx squared is this times x squared. It's really a factoring, really, when you combine like terms. All right, what are the x terms on the right side here? Um, 2bx mm -hmm. and cx. Right. So what's the coefficient on x here? Uh, 2b plus c. Correct. OK. Again, making it nice in parentheses. Well, you need the grouping here. You need the group 2b plus c. Oops. Hard to write plus signs. There we go. Plus C. All right. And then finally, six plus uh, 
Yes, right. The six and ah, what counts as constant? The two C does count as constant. C is unknown, but it's a constant. It's a it's a it's an unknown constant. Six plus two C. Bottom line is there are no X's, right? There's no X in this term. There's no X in that term. So they do represent constant terms, although C is unknown at this time. Yes. All right. So now we're really setting ourselves up well for matching coefficients. And in fact, it turns out that we just needed two of these, not all three, but it's good to see the big picture. Any questions thus far? No. Okay, so I'll go ahead and put some lines in here just to indicate the matching. I'll do that, I'll do that in red. I'll, I'll do um, okay, so basically in order for, for the left side polynomial to be equivalent to the right side polynomial, the coefficient x squared here must equal the coefficient x squared here. The coefficient x here has to equal the coefficient x here. The constant term here must equal the constant term there. That's the principle of matching coefficients. That's the only way that the left side can be equivalent to the right side. We have nice descending powers form on both sides. Any questions about what we're doing here? No. No. Okay, good. Uh, so let's go ahead. Let's do another page here. All right. So really, you're solving a system, and I'll show you what system you're solving. Um, you can be a bit more practical than this, but I, I want to show you that this is, in fact, a system. All right, I'll do it in red. All right. Okay, so uh, we have... Okay. We have a very nice system. It's very sparse. Uh, I'll put the, the stuff with the letters on the left. 6 plus b equals 8. Okay, turns out we don't need to line up really anyway. Line up. We don't have to line up like terms here. Uh, 2b plus c equals 7. 6 plus 2c equals 12. And in fact, uh, we just need one of these two guys, actually. Okay, so when you look at this system, all right, um, well, you know, uh, and remember, we, we knew that A was fixed already, all right? We have a system of three linear equations and two unknowns. It turns out we just need a couple of these. So when you solve the system, when you want to solve for B and C, uh, what are your thoughts? How so would you solve for B and C? Find B, which is the first one, so B equals 2. And Correct. Plug that in the mm -hmm. uh, okay, so subtracting six from both sides, you get that B is 2, mm -hmm. right? Now you're correct. You could plug in two into here, but actually we can get C from the bottom guy alone. Actually, uh, and either is fine, right? Uh, I think. Well, I think this might be easier from the okay. bottom equation. We don't need B here. We can just solve for C. Uh, how would you solve for C here? Um, minus six, which is six, and then divided by two, which is um, three. Right. Okay. So you subtract six from both sides. Two C equals six. Divide both sides by two, you get c equals three. And actually, one one way that this middle equation can help, that's good as a check, right? Two times two is four, add the three, and you get seven. So that middle guy is good for a check. I mean, he better check out. If, if it doesn't check out, if you get like eight or nine, then you made a mistake somewhere, right? So it's, it's uh, very reassuring that this does check out. Right. Okay. And again, some students might have taken the b equals two, plug it in here. That's fine. That's four, subtract, you get three again. Okay, and th that's your choice. Yeah, uh, I have no preference for either method for finding C. But we now have values for A, B, and C. Any questions thus far? Um, no, that um, makes a lot of sense now. <laughs> now we're not done. What do we have to do? Remember the variation problems where we had like K? What's our last thing we need to do? Plug it in too. Yeah, yeah, right, a lot of people forget to do that, yeah. Okay, so let's remember that we have to plug things in. Okay, uh, plug into the PFD form to get the PFD. No reason to lose a few points just from uh, forgetting to do that. Okay, so referring back to our form here, you don't have to write down the left side. Uh, you can just go ahead and write down the right side. What is the PFD? Well, we know A is 6. Uh, I'll go ahead and do this in blue now. All right, we know that A is 6, so we have 6 over x plus 2. Plus, okay, B is 2, so we have 2x, C is 3, we have plus 3 all over the x squared plus 1, okay, and I hope, whoops, let's check, I hope that's the answer, E here, right, 
Yeah. Okay. So that's uh, yeah. Six over X plus two plus two X plus three all over X squared plus one. But of course, uh, do show basically all the work here. I think it's fair for me to have you do all the work here. Um, uh, here you can choose a couple of these equations, but uh, and you don't have to write my commentary, although it might help you. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, and, by, and by the way, one note, uh, if, if uh, you have a friend who switched the fractions, that's fine. Uh, you can order the fractions in either order. Just make sure that the, the, the top goes to, goes to the corresponding bottom. Okay. okay. Any questions? That was a good one to go through. We, we hadn't touched this before in the videos. Um, no, let's see. I'm... So I, I started F, the next one, and I got A. I think it's the same thing. It's the same method, right? Well, um, I would say that, well, okay, now factoring is one thing, you know, knowing how to factor the denominator. And then you might use either the method one, the plug-in method, method two, the algebra or matching coefficients method, or some hybrid. Right, some some mix of the two, um, so there's there's no there's no weird third method or anything. Although, um, as I said before, regarding factoring the bottoms, that's that's a whole chapter two review there, right? And we have a whole suite of techniques for those, um, like F for example, right? A lot of people forgot factoring by grouping, right? And actually, I do have I do have uh, some ready-made whiteboards for those. Um, yeah. So factoring by grouping. Here's a review of factoring by grouping. All right. Um, yeah, I watched that video. <laughs> Right, so um, oh, I just posted it yesterday, so I don't blame people. But uh, okay, so a quick review uh, here: we're grouping, we're taking that denominator. Okay, we're grouping the first two terms, grouping the last two terms, and then locally, you're you're identifying the GCF and factoring it out. So here, we're factoring out an x squared. We get x minus five, plus here we factor out a three. Lo and behold, we get that same x minus five again. Right, if, if this technique's going to work, we better get a common factor here. Right. Here we have a common binomial factor, x minus 5. And actually, we can factor that guy out. Now, you don't square it, though, right? Um, so the x minus 5, you're factoring it from here and here. OK, there's no rationale for squaring that. A lot of students square this. You don't square the x minus 5. You're, you're just factoring out that common factor. Mm -hmm. right? And then where are the missing pieces? The x squared and the 3. We're, we're reversing the distributive property as we do this factoring. OK, so this might be kind of weird on the eyes, but um, Okay, it might be a little weird on the eyes, but any questions here, like from here to here, for example, um, do you agree that's the factorization? Yes. Okay, and then the corresponding form is very similar to what we had before. Um, I chose to put the linear denominator first here, a over x minus five plus the linear form over the x squared plus three. And in fact, the solution method is very similar to what we had before. Yeah, that's what I'm realizing now, just because I didn't understand E, so I was like, now I don't know how to do F. <laughs> oh, okay. So what I would recommend is um, instead of, well, you have the option of viewing the video, but I, I would encourage you to just try it on your own, just for your own practice, right? And then and then if you're into trouble, be aware that there's a video there as sort of a, uh, a pillow to, la to land back on. But uh, but I, I do encourage you to try it on your own. I, I think yeah. you'll find it more gratifying if you can work it out uh, without the video at first. Yeah, no, I can. I think I can do F by myself now. Sure, I think um, you would. Yeah, yeah. So um, I haven't even tried G or H yet, and I didn't. You know, a G, a G is not so bad. I think I have a, a some notes on that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, G. Just a comment. So that denominator, when you factor, right? The GCF is X. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it does factor like that, and then um, that that X squared plus X plus one that is a prime quadratic. Uh, similar, similarly to x squared plus one, for example, right? Um, it's just weird looking because it's a trinomial. It has three terms, but this is a quadratic that's prime over the reals. Uh, if you use a, if you use the discriminant or the quadratic formula, you'll find that this has no real zeros. And if a quadratic has no real zeros, that quadratic is prime over the reals. So um, basically, it's that linear form that we used before, bx plus c, and we have that that quadratic, that prime quadratic guy in the bottom. It's just weird looking because he's a trinomial. We're more used to these binomials like x squared plus one. This guy's a trinomial, but the overall philosophy is the same. Again, be careful with grouping symbols. Ah, yeah, this is a case where uh, I, uh, I tricked the student yesterday temporarily. Bx plus cx, well, you need grouping symbols around the bx plus c. That's really easy to miss. 
-hmm. when I, I had this kind of problem on final exams, a lot of students would forget to put gripping symbols and they were doomed if they forgot them or if they failed to distribute. Okay, and, and so I'm, yeah, that's easy. And then you just, for the first, you could substitute um, X for zero and get it. Well, yeah, if you plug in X equals zero, that does a great job of, in fact, I think A will come through very quickly, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then after, you may want to try the, uh, go to the algebra approach maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, no, some people uh, like their arithmetic more than their algebra. They can plug in values for X. It's never wrong to do that. It's just that um, uh, if, you use, if you use the ideal method, your systems tend to be nicer. So that is one benefit. See, one problem with the plug-in method is that if, if you get unlucky with plugging in numbers, you might have to use matrices to solve that end system. And that's the last, that's a, a last case scenario. Last mm -hmm. resort. Yeah, I was realizing that on um, E because I was trying to plug in to get rid of um, A and it just I was just like, it's not working because X squared plus one, you would have to do rad negative one plus one to try and get rid of one. Oh, right, right. It's, 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 it's that's zero. why it's prime over the reals. There's not a real value for X that knocks them out. That's exactly right. That's right. So that's why it's a prime quadratic. Remember, mm -hmm. um, you have a prime quadratic on the reals. Now this is not true for fourth degree in general, but uh, you have a prime quadratic over the reals, like like this guy here or the X squared plus one, if and only if there are no uh, real zeros, right? And you can make a quick check by checking that the discriminant uh, if it's negative, you're doomed. You, you won't have any real zeros because uh, if, if the discriminant is negative, your quadratic formula is going to be all messed up if you try to find zeros, real zeros. Yeah, I would, there would be an I. Right, exactly. And we're keeping it real. Uh, for this uh, final portion of the course, chapter seven through 10, we're keeping it real. The only time we'll see I is as an index for like uh, sequences, series, uh, like A sub I, right? That generic notation. Uh, the only time you see I is as part of notation, basically. We're no longer using the imaginary unit. Okay. Um, I don't really have any more questions, just um, general questions really about the class. Oh, okay. Uh, and by the way, I'll stop the recording at any time. Like if you want to discuss grades or whatever. Um, uh, so let me know. Let me know. Uh, do you have any uh, particular questions about uh, the class? Any other questions? Um, just, I'm just asking for, so for calculus, because you said that from here on for the rest of the class, we're going to be using all real numbers. Um, for calculus, will it be mostly just real numbers? Yeah, for the calculus sequence, yeah, you pretty much keep it real. Now, now I don't want to take away the right of a calculus instructor to mm -hmm. introduce some uh, imaginary number material. But no, if you think about Calc 1, 2, and 3, it, you pretty much keep it real. Um, okay. Now, now I, I know that at UCSD, when I was a TA there, they would sometimes sneak in like, like roots of complex numbers, just as an additional topic, uh, like as part of their multivariable class, for example. So some some universities might try to sneak it in somehow, but in calculus, you mostly keep it real. Uh, now, later on in linear algebra, like at Mesa, right? Even uh, at Mesa, uh, we do have a unit on um, imaginary numbers with linear algebra, Math 254. Uh, and in differential equations, it might come up as well. Okay. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. Yes. Uh, did you have any further questions? about uh, either this material or, or the math curriculum um, or, or anything else, anything else? Give me one second. I just started 8.1 while I was waiting. Um, oh, okay. Actually on 8.1, number three. Okay, let me see if I have a record of that. I did, I did number four. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so eight one three. Right, right. That's that's the first uh, kind of normal problem in the set. Right. Okay. Uh -huh. Um. So it says use matrices and I don't know how to say that. Okay, Gauss right. Gaussian elimination with back substitution. And and I uh, sent out an email reminding people that at least the way I do it. Some books differ. The way I do it, I tell people that if their system uh, has one unique solution then they have to go all the way to that uh, special row echelon form we talked about. One's along the main diagonal on the coefficient side, zero's all below. Uh, because some people like to leave other numbers on the diagonal. And uh, the, the form of Gebs we're using, we're, we're, I'm requiring that people put ones on the main diagonal in part so that 
so that I know that students know what row echelon form is. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm I'm just going into the notes. That's okay. There's no rush. So, um, can we do that one together to sure. right so that I can understand it a little better? Right. Sure. Sure. Okay. So, um, I'll get another whiteboard here. Right. Okay. Number three. Uh, and by the way, number four, I believe I have a video on, maybe. <laughs> I, I have some notes on number four, but uh, okay. So let's look at number three. Oh, uh, let me use a different, I'll use mm, green. I'll use green. All right. Okay. So let's take a look at uh, 8.1. Number three, okay, so our first sort of normal systems problem. Okay, okay, so uh, here's the given system. You're, you're not required to rewrite it, although if it helps you uh, with your work, that's fine. Um, but you are required to write the first augmented matrix. All right, so, and if it helps, uh, it might help students to indicate that we have ones as leading coefficients here, because some students are tempted to put zeros here. Actually, they're ones, right? Okay, so uh, our first augmented matrix will have a four, a two, and a negative three. The slash is optional, but it separates the coefficient side from the right-hand side. And then over here, again, these are ones, not zeros. One, one, and negative two. Uh, and for my reference, I like to put the unknowns or variables up on top to remind me that it's X and Y, not, for example, A and B. Okay, uh, although in the end, uh, if, if, if this does have one unique solution, when you write the ordered pair, uh, you're not going to write X or Y down as, as in, in part of your solution set anyway. All right. Uh, okay, okay. So first off, what's our goal? What is our goal? Put this in red. In a way, it's kind of like a target for the trig identities. What's the goal? Our goal is that great row echelon form that I was mentioning. So uh, what would we like? What number would we like on the main diagonal of the coefficient matrix? What great number? We'd love to have ones. Okay, We like having one coefficient on the main diagonal. And do you remember which number we have below? Which number we'd like to have below that main diagonal? Um, Gaussian, I don't know. Is it four? Gaussian elimination. Elimination. Goose egg. The zero there indicates basically an eliminated term, like a missing term. Okay. Right. And the others are wild cards. I'll put squiggles here. The others are wild cards. They could be anything. And in fact, remember, uh, you could do it one way. Your friend could do it another way. And, uh, you know, if you use different methods, you might have different uh, Reuschelon forms. And you could still be both correct. Reuschelon form is not unique in general, right? Uh, it's usually not. Uh, although reduced Reuschelon form is. Okay, but anyway, uh, here's, here's the really nice Rushland form we're aiming for, assuming that the system has one unique solution. If it turns out this thing has no solution, then, then the process gets short-circuited anyway in the middle. Uh, any questions thus far? Um, I, I don't really understand why you... Okay, so for the zero, you're just substituting because there's no... I don't understand. <laughs> well, well, the idea is that we're going to take, we're, we're going to, uh, and this is the long strategic part of the problem. The idea is that we're going to apply EROs, elementary row operations, the legal moves basically, like chess moves, that mm -hmm. will get us from the original augmented matrix to to this more ideal augmented matrix, which will allow, which corresponds to a system that's easy to solve. The system that corresponds to this will be a triangular system that's very easy to solve, as we'll see. By the way, I'm realizing that tilde that this I shouldn't use a tilde since I use that for something else. Maybe I'll put uh, question marks here. <laughs> question marks. All right. But this is the uh, ideal row echelon form we're aiming for. And in fact, if this square system, it's got two linear equations in two unknowns. It's a square system. If this square system has one unique solution, then we must be able to get to this form. This must be a possible form. 
in the square coefficient matrix on the left, we have ones on the main diagonal and zeros all below. We eventually want to hit this target. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Any no. questions? Okay. So now the hard part. Okay. So we, we've uh, step one was to write down the first augmented matrix, and we reminded ourselves of the goal. Now step two is the hard part. It's the long part. Okay, we're going to have to apply the sequence of ER rows. So we're going to have to write a sequence of matrices here. It's the, it's, it's the longer strategic part of the problem. It's the hardest part of the problem. Okay, now, do you see a quick way that we can get a one in the upper left? Do you remember a legal move, a legal ERO, elementary row operation we can apply that can help get me a one up there? Multiply by the reciprocal. That's one method that'll work. You could uh, multiply the top row by one fourth. However, one practical weakness is that you're going to end up with what over here? When you divide by four, you're going to end up with fractions, which are not wrong. Okay. I I'm not saying it's wrong, but I think students tend to uh, not prefer to work with fractions early on. Uh, so um, although that that's an idea that would work, there's another ERO that would work that might be more convenient to students. Aside from rescaling, do you remember another legal move that'll work? Just reordering the yes. rows? Right, switching the rows, right? Reordering the rows, correct. Okay, um, and if you do something like that, then I'll know what you're doing, right? Um, I, I know in class, I mentioned uh, the, the slightly more formal notation. You don't have to do that, but it is helpful for, uh, to you and me if you at least give, you know, give you and me some indication of what you did, right? Here, we're gonna switch the rows. Okay, so technically the tilde here indicates row equivalence. Uh, the idea being that these augmented matrices will represent equivalent systems with the same solution set. All right. Green. Whoops, green. All right. The old row two is the new row one, 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 slash, slash is optional, negative two. And then the old row one becomes the new row two. Four, two, negative three. All right. And we like that one there. This looks very Christmassy. <laughs> we like mm. the one here. All right. Now, we tend to try to make things good column by column. I want to make column one good. What number should be in this position? What's the goal? What number should be in this position? Zero. Yeah, we'd like that to be a zero. Now, bear in mind, it's illegal to multiply through by zero. That's illegal. Uh, you can't do that through an equation. You can't do that through here either. So we pretty, we're pretty much, and switching is not going to help. So we're pretty much stuck with that, uh, that, that uh, row replacement operation. It was like an addition and elimination method. All right, it's the third one we discussed in class. So here, uh, I would recommend doing this kind of table. All right, so the old row two. Four, two, slash, negative three. All right. And we're going to use row one. Now, what this technique says is that we can do the following. We can add, whoops, we can add a multiple of one row to another row. And that combines the idea of rescaling and adding equals to equals, like the idea of adding equations. All right. Now, how can I make this a zero? If I, if I temporarily multiply the first row by, by what number before I add onto here? We want to multiply the one by what number so that the result, when added to this, will give us zero. Negative four. Right. OK, so let's, and again, uh, we have an easier time adding than subtracting. Let's talk about adding negative four times row one. Uh, because if you talk about subtracting four times row one, I think a lot of people, including me, would get into trouble. So I like to frame things in terms of adding and combining like terms. We're adding negative four times row one. And we'll do that sign issue right now. Okay. So it's like a, a little drummer boy in your head. One times negative four is negative four. Da, 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 da. One times negative four is negative four. Da, da, da. The negative two, don't forget this guy, the negative two times the negative four is a positive eight. Watch your signs very carefully. Okay, we add down zero. That's what we wanted. You win two, you lose four, you've lost two, right? If you lose three but win eight, you've gained five. Right. 
And this will be the new row two. We like the old row one. It's got a one up there in the left, in left position. All right. And, and if you show me this, then that basically shows the step, okay, writing these uh, labels here, right? Any questions thus far? No. Okay, so let's proceed. Let's go to a second whiteboard. All right. Okay, so um, we have row equivalents. All right, and then here's our new matrix. First row stays the same. You're going to find they're going to be recopying rows a lot. That's kind of tedious, but you got to do it. One, one slash negative two. The new row two is this guy zero, negative two, five. And I hope I'm correct. Let me let me check myself for a moment. It's okay to peek at the answers to make sure that you're on the right track. Oh yeah, I'm on the right track. Yeah, I was a little freaked out because we're going to get fractions. But uh, as I tell students, we shouldn't be so afraid of fractions. We are going to get fractions as coordinates here in our solution. Okay, that was freaking me out though. <laughs> okay, question so far, question so far. No. Now this is why I sent out that email. Because some students get used to stopping here and you do get a triangular system when you write this out. But if you want to take this to row echelon form, what number should be in this position? One. A one, yeah. Okay, so, and that and to get row echelon form, which is that instruction I gave people in the email, this really should be a one here. All right, and a natural way to do it, well, what's, what would be a natural way of doing that? Remember, you don't wanna use row one because this one's gonna mess up that zero. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, what should we do through the second row to make this a one? Is it multiply the, by the reciprocal? Sure, no. multiply by the reciprocal, right? Multiply by negative one half. That's the way a lot of books would look at it. Uh, and I don't know why books just don't say, hey, divide by negative two. Same thing. Oh, yeah. Well, whichever, yeah, whichever method is better for you. If you think better in terms of multiplying the recipro by the reciprocal, certainly that's correct. Yeah, certainly that is correct. Okay, uh, so it might depend on your, your ability to perform computations and which is better for you, which form is better. All right, anyway, uh, our last tilde for this one, row equivalents. Uh, these matrices are not equal because we have some different entries in the same position, but they are row equivalent. They represent equivalent systems with the same solution set. All right, row one stays put. One, one, slash, negative two. Okay, going through row two, we can do this directly. Let's divide by negative two or multiply by negative one half. Zero, well, divide this by himself, it's a one, all right? And what goes here? What's in the bottom right? Negative five halves. Right, negative five halves. At first, I was a little freaked out because it was a fraction, but because there was a fraction there, but it turns out that eh, that does work out. All right. Questions. Questions. Um, no. So now. Um, and by the way, this is row echelon form. By the way, row echelon forms don't always have to be this perfect, but uh, um, uh, this is a, this is a, a good row echelon form uh, when you're solving systems, and there's one unique solution. Uh, okay. A question. Question. Uh, no. All right. Um, now, if you want to do Gauss-Jordan, then you could try to make that a zero, and then the solution pops up over here. Right? But with Gebs, uh, more generally, uh, we would tend to rewrite the system with the letters. All right. Remember that x and y were the variables or unknowns, really. Okay. X coefficients here, y coefficients here. The first equation, how does the first equation read off? X, because that's a 1x plus y. y equals, we put equals now, the negative two. And we love that second equation. What's that second equation saying? Um, y equals negative five halves. Right, it gives us a coordinate in our solution point. All right, I'll go ahead and circle it. In fact, I'll use, uh, let's see, brown. All right. Let's circle that. 
I have Y, but I'm not done yet. What do I have to do? Plug in Y for the um, top problem. Correct. That's the back substitution. Okay, so that's what we refer to as the back substitution. All right. I'll do a new page here. Yeah, don't be afraid to use some space. I mean, uh, you could easily use like at least one side of a sheet on even the two equation ones, let alone the three. All right, so do some brown. All right, we, we back substitute. We have x plus the negative 5 halves, or x minus 5 halves, equals the negative 2. All right. Well, I, I can write this as x minus 5 halves equals negative 2. All right, now let's do this. Let's add 5 halves to both sides. Okay, be careful with your signs. Negative two plus five halves. Negative two, that's negative what? Two is how many halves? Two is what divided by two? Four. Four, right. So I want to write negative two as negative four halves because I want a common denominator. And look mm -hmm. at this. Negative four halves plus five halves. That turns out to be? One half. One half. All right. Okay. Uh, now, uh, bear in mind, uh, our final solution should be written as a solution set. Mm -hmm. It's the solution set. I know. I know students have a hard time writing these braces. That takes a lot of practice. All right. Okay. And our solution is an ordered pair. Now, here's a question: Is it negative five halves comma one half? Is that correct? No, it's. It would have to be the other way. It's switched. Is. Right. But be careful for that. Okay, it's kind of like that sobriety test, right? Where, where we found the values for these unknowns in reverse alphabetical order. But remember, the X still comes first, the Y still comes second. Okay. And then, you know, uh, on a final exam, you might, uh, you know, uh, check by plugging these numbers in over here, but I gave you the answer. Although it might be gratifying to do that anyway, even though I do give you the solution sets. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, one half comma negative five halves. Looks good. Okay. So number three, I think I wanted to give people and myself an early lesson that you shouldn't be afraid of fractions. I mean, sometimes you're going to have non-integer values in your uh, in your solutions, and you shouldn't be so afraid of them all the time. Okay. Uh, thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. Yes. And like I said earlier, I I think. Four. I discussed four earlier with a student, though I don't know if there's a video on that. Um, let me let me check. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh no, no. It's it's on the Saturday video. It, it was my first. It was the first office hour video. Saturday the twenty first. We did discuss eight point one number four. Okay, I'll look at that if I need sure. help. Um, but that's it as of tonight. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, good luck, and uh, I hope you enjoy Thanksgiving tomorrow and. Uh, so it's both a matter of, I hope that you have a productive week, but also, you know, try to relax and, you know, I hope you can gather your thoughts and be happy, be well. <laughs> Thank you. Right, and I'll, I'll be checking my email uh, pretty regularly. I'm not going anywhere. You know, I'm going to have a lunch tomorrow, but I'm not really going anywhere. So um, staying safe here. So I am available by email and, um, uh, you know, we, we can even do one, one of these over the weekend if that's helpful. But uh, all right. Uh, any, did you have any questions? Um, that's all for tonight. All right. Uh, good luck. Have a happy Thanksgiving. And Thank uh, and if you don't mind, I'll post this. Yes, no problem. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, take care. Okay, you too. Bye-bye. Right.